So the translation will translate the word vanity something like chasing the wind or the wind. Because it's not going to last forever. Now I know sometimes we think it will, but it won't. But enjoy it while it's here, remembering though that we will have to, you know, bring God will bring these things into judgment. Okay, and so fleeting youthfulness. Why? Remember the creator today by youth number one, because youth is fleeting. Yes. Which leads us to our next point. Number two here, why remember thy creator today by youth? Because the days of our youth is a favorable opportunity to remember. Notice in chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now. Thy creator in the days of thy youth. Now notice before the evil, or actually while the evil days come not. So some translations have before the evil days come, but while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. You see, youthfulness, of course, is fleeting with point number one, but here notice youth. And for that matter, all of us here today anyway, but especially youth, have the ability and the opportunity now to remember their Creator. Because you see, again, as we mentioned, that this is somewhat of a carefree time in our lives if, if we're youth. We don't, for the most part, many of us, most youth, don't have to worry about making a living, right. making ends meet, working two jobs, one job, whatever the case. <laughs> Now's the time. Now notice he says here, while the evil days come not. Now the evil days here don't necessarily, do not necessarily refer to morally evil days. But sometimes in the, especially in the wisdom of literature, evil may refer to times of calamity. Yes. For example, you remember in Job chapter 2, and uh, this passage kind of is good commentary on this. In Job, of course, chapter 1, he lost uh, his possessions, every, you know, that which he owned, even his children. Of course, we have the um, information revealed to us in chapters 1 and 2. Of course, Job and his three friends did not have that information. And then in uh, Job chapter 2, he loses his health. That's right. And, of course, Satan is uh, challenging God, saying, you know, Job in chapter 1, he only serves you because you bless him so. You can cut off his blessings and he'll turn away and curse you. So the Lord said, okay, go ahead and take away the possessions, and we'll see. And so in, in one day, all Job lost his possessions, including his children. But remember how chapter 1 ends. Naked came out of my, father, or my, my mother's womb, and naked shall have turned thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And then in chapter 2, Satan again challenged him, yeah, skin for skin, though. Yeah, he took away, he's still faithful. Yeah, but you just touch his head. And he cursed So the Lord said, okay, take away his help, just spare his life. And that happened. And then if that wasn't bad enough in verse 10 or verse 9 of chapter 2. Then said his wife unto him, Thus thou still retain thy integrity, curse God and die. Notice Job's response. He says unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. What? Notice it. Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Now we know God does not give us moral evil. Yes. James 2, 12 through 14 says that's impossible. What's he referring to? Disaster calamity, the loss of his possessions, the loss of his health. You see, if Job hadn't remembered God in his earlier days, he would have never stood the test. But his faith continued, though it waited. And if we were to take some passages out of context in Job, we'd find him blaming God for things. We'd find him, you know, speaking some bad things about God. But in that context, we see the struggle. But what all is said is, is said and done, as uh, James 5.11 points out, we see the patience of Job, but we see the merciful, loving kindness of the Lord. But we say all that to say, if we go back to Ecclesiastes, 
Remember now that I created the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. Nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Now the evil days in this context is old age, deteriorating health. And again, now is the opportunity, a favorable opportunity for young people to remember their creator. Because you see, as we grow old, and again, as age advances, the less easy it is to remember the Creator. Yes. Because, you know, we may have too many irons in the fire, we might say. As those of us who are adults know, when the children start, well, when they're born, you know, they're a little bit easier to take care of. They don't cost a whole lot much more than to get through the hospital bill. But after that, we get teenagers and they raid the fridge and all that, and all their activities at school and stuff, going here and going there, there's lots of irons in the fire. 